Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a little bit of gameplay footage for the first time in what feels like forever. Um, we have Garp versus Kid here. Uh, I will say this Kid player seemed like they were just kind of getting into the swing of things with the deck, so it wasn't necessarily the best matchup that, you know, just all I'll say, like, oh, I just absolutely smashed Kid with Garp. It's not running the film package from what I could see. Um, but this Garp deck is something I threw together. I uh, don't think it's relatively close to like the top 32 deck or anything like that i was just kind of running some games trying to get footage the other day so i wish this oh no okay uh we're not gonna mess with that anymore but uh they started off with a wire which i thought was really weird um but it is what it is you know i'm all for being different with deck building and trying to be a little bit different so I give him the benefit of the doubt and from here I'm just kind of waiting for him to pass turn we draw into the great eruption I do like this card because it gives you the draw one and then you do get to you know neg two to their character cost and honestly when you don't have anything else even though Garp does you know neg with uh, its ability its leader ability uh, this Nami comes in handy to uh you know use something like great eruption and then reuse the uh dawn that you use for that to also activate ability so that's extra cost reduction with garp but uh yeah it, it really didn't mean anything i didn't have anything uh for removal sake for you know zero cost or less so we just play the nami bulk up on garp a little bit more and um from there we swung uh, we, it looks like we took the first life. They're going to swing with five into Garp. I take the first life. We get the Nami, the Searcher Nami from OP01. And that, there's really nothing wrong with that. So uh, it was worth taking the life, in my opinion. Uh, we are at three. They're at four. It's to be expected early game with a dual color leader like this. Um, they're stacking up for seven. I don't know why they kept the one. Maybe they have a Paradise Waterfall. But uh, I go ahead and take it. We do get the three drop Kobe. Um, very good card. I prefer the three drop over the one drop Kobe because three drop Kobe, it can be three or less versus the character having to be a zero cost. But we do um, play the searcher Nami. I can't search Nami off Nami even though that would have been really great. Uh, we did see two impact waves, which kind of sucks having to put like the best counter in our deck to the bottom, but it is what it is. <clears throat> From here, I'm contemplating on whether or not I want to play Rush Zoro, or if I just want to, you know, load up and swing a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and swing with six. I kind of want to get their character off board, just kind of clean their board up, give them less swings on the next turn. We are down to two life at this point. And they're doubled that, so we gotta, you know, kind of balance out this momentum. They counter out with a scalpel. Uh, this is a card I've thought about playing with before, but you know, it is what it is. They play scalpel, they get rid of the trigger killer. We then play the rush Zoro and replay, reuse one of the dawn to play it with the Nami effect. And we swing another six into the wire, hoping that they won't waste resources again, and they do not, which is the smart move in my opinion. Uh, we're too early in the game to be wasting resources on a small character like that just for board presence sake. And they hit me with the film event and get rid of the rush Zoro, which is fine. Zoro kind of played his part. He facilitated the needs I needed. Now this, this part of the game uh, kind of threw me off a little bit. I do 2k out of the swing, but they have 3 up, and I wasn't even thinking about them using leader ability this early on, but they ditched the 7 drop kid to restand and swing again with 6, which in my opinion just wasn't the move. I have too many cards in hand. You're wasting 3 resources that could have gone on to like a blocker or something. So they pass back to me. We have two Otamas in hand for 2k counter outs. We have a blocker chopper, two Borsalinos, and the three drop Kobe. There's nothing on their board to really worry about clearing out. So at this point, it's just about how well can we load up. I uh, do decide to go ahead and play the Borsalino just to be safe in case next turn they come down with something big. Um, we use the Nami to reuse a Dawn that we used on the Borsalino. We load up on 
garp and we go ahead and swing uh realistically i probably should have gone you know on tanami with five and then swung with six with garp and gotten two swings in right here but you know we live we learn that keeps uh the 2k nami on board for a later swing we don't have to worry about losing it i mean we're not really that worried about losing it so to speak but it is nice to have like that extra swing especially if you're going to push for game and with, with playing red and there's a lot of the low cost things going on sometimes those two 3k bodies can come in handy to just kind of have on board and your opponent's not really going to worry about them too much so it is what it is they do drop the five drop double attack banish yamato and that was not expected at all but again i respect deck building choices um from here i have contemplated the borsalino but i'd still have to counter out if i wanted to save the borsalino and i know we have to make up some ground they have three life we have one and they just put that yamato down so from here we are on nine i believe yes we're on nine and i'm contemplating how to do this uh yeah remember to always keep your pc plugged in while you're recording footage or else you end up with that screen in the middle of your footage i apologize about that um i will learn one day so from here it's kind of you know okay how do we do this i play the chopper just to get extra use out of the dawn that i would have to attach with the nami i was going to play it anyways just to, you know for board sake to be safe from here I'm kind of debating do I do rush Zoro or do I do the Kobe um, I'm trying to use my Dawn as efficiently as possible but we go ahead and drop the Yamato down to three costs at this point in time we have two blockers on board Borsalino made the most sense to go ahead and discard keep the 2k counters keep the rush Zoro um, I didn't feel I was in a position to play you know completely aggro enough to finish out game this turn so we're gonna save the rush zoro we have the two blockers you know that saves us on two swings they should only have one swing next turn so theoretically we could last out two turns but just in case they decide to do some shenanigans with restanding kid or something again we do have the two blockers which is why i with no events or anything like that we do have the 2k nami that we're going to swing six with they have six cards in hand so you would expect them to counter out if they have the counters uh, again i don't know at all what this person's playing uh i don't know if they're event heavy or what but we go ahead and pass it off to them they are now on 10 i think that the double swing with kid is very real which is partially why i went ahead and got two blockers up on the board and next turn if as long as we see through it which we should we do have the rush zoro we have the garp we have the borsalino you know we have three swings on one life to kind of hopefully get through anything they may have in their hand but it's just a matter of waiting for them to play out their turn at this point i believe they're just kind of contemplating what to do they do drop the x drake and get rid of the nami again the nami is not something we're worried about keeping on board that frees up a character slot so we don't have to just trash one of our characters to play something like the rush zoro we block with the chopper they do have three up so i'm assuming they're going to restand and swing again which does get resources out of their hand and we can take it whether we take the life or we block or you know however we decide to do it but they are only on seven so if i'm correct i block with borsalino and 2k out so i can keep the body on board for next turn that is what happens and then from there we draw the searcher nami and i'm they they say gg but i know in this position and my luck i play it wrong so um and i don't know if they've just completely given up at this point or what but i i still want to play the turn correctly i'm not just going to get cocky uh there will be a video up this weekend that will show you exactly why you don't get overly cocky and get ahead of yourself because it can cost you the game very easily <laughs> so from here i go ahead and swing nine I'm, I'm assuming they have counters in hand or something but they take the life and then we are i believe going to load up on borsalino a little bit uh 
No, we load up on the uh, the Kobe. That way, if we play this wrong, we still have a blocker on board, and they just concede at that point. So, you know, GG's. I feel like it was a good game. Uh, they did try their best, and I do commend them for that. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and judge anybody for being a bad player or anything like that. I thought it was... Uh, it's always fun to see people play unique card choices. They may, they may not be the best card choices, but it doesn't mitigate the fact that it is fun to play something that's a little bit different. One Piece does have a very limited card pool, and we are seeing that expand more and more with every set. But until then, I think it's, it's fine to experiment, especially if you're just starting out and you don't necessarily know what you know the best staples are and things like that. You know, Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to get on and just try some stuff out. Have fun with it. It's not always about being the most competitive or being the like absolute Chad best that just gets every win that you go up against. You know, have fun with the game. That's the point of the game is to go in, have fun. That's the point of the cards existing is to be able to try them out and learn why they may not be the best card choice or why they are the best card choice or maybe they're like a mid-range or well, not mid-range but you know like they're a mid card like sometimes they're where they work and sometimes they don't um, sometimes they're situational and conditional but anyways if you like what you saw go ahead and hit that like button if you're new here go ahead and hit the subscribe button for more one piece tcg content pretty much daily whether it's a live stream which we've been doing a lot more on the channel just because it's a little bit easier to fit into the day or it's a video like this among the other things that i do and until the next time i will see you later and i hope you have a wonderful day peace